public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2020 operating budget. The sign-up sheet was available to the public prior to the meeting for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's hearing. As your name is called, please come to the front table to speak. I will also announce the next speaker's name and ask that person to come to the table and be on deck and ready to provide their comments. Any written comments may be given to Ms. Tracy Gover, the board's assistant. Each speaker will be given three minutes to speak on the proposed fiscal year 2020 operating budget. I ask you to observe the time Excuse me, the public hearing is not the forum to speak on any other topics. I ask you to observe the time to my left and also on the speaker's table, which will let you know when your time is up. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the buzzer or see that your time has expired. The first two names are Ms. Diana Bergman and Ms. Cynthia Boyd. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have a big smile. I'm not in tears because from all the operating budgets that I've seen BCPS present since all three of my children have been in BCPS, this one has absolutely been amazing. Um, I have spent quite a while advocating and making a lot of noise um, and kept pushing and kept pushing and you know how tenacious I could be. And I really wanted to see an operating budget that was heading in this direction with the resources and the support and a well balance. It, it shows balance um, when you're looking at this budget. Um, you see the component there for the behavior health and the special education needs. You see a lot more being provided for our special education students and our ESOL students. Um, I'm just like absolutely amazed with this operating budget. Now one of the other things, because you know, you could always ask for more, um, is our speech language pathologists and what they could bring into special education. And I think that we will benefit increasing some of our speech language pathologists to help children with those um, pragmatic skills, um, expressive and receptive language and articulation skills. So that is really one area that I saw. We could use some more warm bodies, um, our SOPs, and also some of our OTs. Um, our, Occupational therapists, um, they create, especially when they work with our board certified behavior analysts, amazing intervention programs for our children that have sensory issues um, that they must overcome in society. So overall, like I said, I, I'm just absolutely amazed. I'm absolutely amazed to also see an improvement in climate go outside of that schoolhouse. Um, I had said this before that if we're going to improve our transportation needs, that we also have to provide that transportation support um, to improve the climate on the school bus. So I'm going to keep advocating, asking for more, because you know that's what we should all do as parents um, to support our students and our teachers and our staff. So thank you. And um, I'm so excited. I like. I really, really am really excited about this operating budget. So, um, best of luck. And I really hope our county executive is as excited as I am about the operating budget as me. So, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. And next up after her will be Abby Baton. Good evening, Chairperson Kazi, Vice Chair Hen, BOE members, and Ms. White. I'm Dr. Cynthia Boyd from the PTA Council of Baltimore County's Health and Safety Committee, and I'm speaking tonight on behalf of President Jane Lee. At the last Board of Education meeting, PTA Council was happy to learn that the proposed FY20 operating budget includes increased funding for so many things we've advocated for over the past several years. 
In terms of priorities, it's the most balanced budget we've seen in a long time. It reflects a new thinking on STAT by reducing the ratio from one to one to two to one in grades one and two. We have advocated for a three to one ratio for all elementary grades in keeping with past MSDE and MABE recommendations, but two to one is certainly a start. We are concerned though that the ratio has increased in kindergarten. Overall, we are happy that more thought has been given to developmentally appropriate practices, including decreasing screen time, increasing play, focusing on foundational skills, and creating access to textbooks. We're pleased that the recommendations of the School Health Council have been taken into consideration. The cost savings achieved by reducing the student to device ratio in the lowest grades and switching to less expensive Chromebooks at the elementary level allows for addressing critical school system needs, including special education, ESOL, behavior and discipline, supports for struggling schools, transportation, and reinstating schoolhouse budgets. PTA Council is pleased with the proposed budget, budgets, increase in support staff, guidance counselors, social workers, and school psychologists, and social emotional learning teachers. We're also happy that assistant principal positions at smaller elementary schools will be reinstated. This cost saving move from a number of years back had devastating effects. Class sizes are a continuing concern, and we do wish the proposed budget also included hiring more pupil personnel workers to better serve homeless students, and that the community elig eligibility provision, or CEP, would be funded to reach students who don't qualify for farms. PTA Council will continue to advocate for BCPS to adopt the community school model where expanded support staff, extended day meals, mentoring programs, and support for families are offered in an organized and comprehensive manner by the school system and community partners. Partners, this People for Our People budget reflects the priority shift, more people, less technology, for which we and other stakeholder groups have advocated. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Abby Baton. And next up on deck will be Ms. Jeanette Young. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Ms. White, and members of the board. We applaud Ms. White for proposing a budget which begins to address the needs for additional staff, especially teachers for FY 2020. We have been asking for more teaching positions for a long time. This budget provides more positions beyond those needed for the additional students expected to enroll next year. We have asked for additional support positions like school counselors, social workers, ESOL teachers, consulting teachers, etc. Many of these are in our budget. Not as many as we might wish for, but we do understand that these increases are a multi-year process. With the addition of 29.4 high school teachers, we are finally beginning to address the 200 positions lost in our high schools almost a decade ago. Unfortunately, at that rate per year, it will take seven years to finally replace those 200 lost positions. While we understand this is the first step, we encourage you to move the timeline up next year so positions can be filled even faster in our high schools. We have always recognized the main, that maintenance of effort is the floor, not the ceiling. Therefore, we are happy to see that this budget exceeds maintenance of effort by 11.2%. <laughs> This is critical if our school system is to become fully funded in the near future. We are also pleased that this budget addresses the student devices without gutting the entire program. If our students are to be 21st century learners, they need the tools necessary to learn in 21st century ways, while still learning in the many different and diverse ways out there. If there is one thing we understand, there is no correct way to learn. Our students are a, div are a diverse group and learn in different ways, and our teachers know they must teach students in a variety of ways to help ensure they are successful in whatever they decide in their future. This budget begins to address those needs. Since you, as board members, do not hold the purse strings, it is not only incumbent upon you to move a great budget forward to the county executive and eventually the county council, it is imperative that you push for the county to fully fund the budget. We will do the same, but your voices can help with that process. I again ask you that you join us on March 11th for our funding rally in Annapolis. If we are to get full funding for this budget, the state must do its part as well. We are counting on you to help moving the funding forward for our children, and thank you for a great budget. 
Thank you. And we have Ms. Jeanette Young, ESPBC president. And next up on deck is Ms. Colleen Baldwin. Good evening. Good evening. It's, it's nice to see each of you this evening. I would like to extend my heart well, welcome to all the board members. This is my first opportunity to congratulate you on your victory. I'm sure that you want what is best for the student and the staff of Baltimore County. My name is Jeanette Young. I am the president of the Education Support Professionals of Baltimore County, ESPBC. ESPBC is the exclusive bargaining agent for the health assistants, uh, interpreters, paraeducators, office professionals, residency investigators, computer technician. We're often the individuals behind the scene. I recognize this is the time to prepare the budget for the 2021 school year. I have taken the opportunity to review part of the superintendent proposed budget. budget. I want to publicly show my appreciation and support for Ms. Valida White as she included funding for devices for the support staff. This is a giant leap into the 21st century for my members. Imagine being the only category of individuals in a building who does not have consistent and reliable access to technology. In today's days and age, emails are more common than flyers and notification. The support staff have remained informational light years behind the staff and the students. Laptops, devices allow paraeducators to effectively support classroom instruction, remain current on BCPS news, and show the BCPS value their roles as education support professionals. While we embrace your initiative to increase device access for paraeducators, one must consider the impact of student population growth, as you pointed out in your capital improvement plan. Baltimore County growing population encompasses an increase in student enrollment. Increased student enrollment not only impact the classroom, but school and central offices as well. As a result, I ask that you do not neglect the demand to increase staff and office professionals and technicians throughout our schools and offices to a ratio that support a manageable workload. Designate an additional education support professional FTEs would only complement the student enrollment growth, people for our people. According to the Department of Legislative Service analysis, more than 24,000 education support professionals dedicating their careers to education of children do not make enough money to support their families. They work second and sometimes third jobs to make ends meet. As you board education members work on fulfilling funding gaps in our schools, it must dedicate new funding to treat, treating these public servants with respect and dignity of making a living wage. As you review the operating budget for 2019-20, please remember education support professionals. We need adequate access to technology, increasing staffing, and a living wage as people for the children of Baltimore County. Thank you. <coughs> and now we have Ms. Colleen Baldwin. If I can ask Ms. Erica Ma to come forward and be on deck. Thank you. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chair Hen, members of the board, and Interim Superintendent White. Thank you for the opportunity for public comment. My name is Colleen Baldwin. I am the Vice President of the Pleasant Plains Elementary PTA, the parent of a second grader and future Panther, as well as the proud spouse of a BCPS teacher who is in his 17th year as an educator. In addition to these roles, my professional background is in the mental health field, 10 years of which were spent working with at-risk youth and families. In light of today's discussion, I would like to lend my support to any substantive efforts put forth to increase instructional, ancillary, and social emotional supports for BCPS students, as well as commensurate compensation for the individuals trusted to teach and care for our children every day. Many of the needs highlighted in Ms. White's proposal directly speak to our experience at Pleasant Plains. In addition to having the teachers needed for optimal student to teacher ratios, increased funding for things like special education, English language learners, and social emotional support are mission critical in terms of educating the whole person. As the third largest Title I school in the county, which is operating at 138% of its state rated capacity, appropriate staffing only scratches the surface in terms of our need. Despite projections to the contrary, actual enrollment data shows a steady increase in our school population. Our community attracts young families with school-aged children, certainly not a bad problem to have. Like many schools, we've been over capacity for some time, and a few months ago, we topped 700 students. 
I would be remiss if I didn't mention recent and meaningful efforts by Heidi Miller and Christina Byers to work with our administrators on short-term staffing relief, as well as proactively advocating for next year's staffing needs. While these conversations are an important start, I would argue that we must systematically shift the needle from reactive to more proactive solutions. Staffing projections ought to be grounded in better data that reflects recent and emerging school trends, allowing schools to make better use of the resources outlined in this budget. Along with adequately addressing operational needs, capital improvements go hand in hand and must be more thoroughly considered to ensure we have the optimal space to accommodate the staff that we need. Thank you for your attention and consideration. My hope is that our system can achieve optimal funding for the person power we need and the space our students and staff deserve to learn and work in. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Ms. Erica Ma, and if I could ask Amanda DeLeo to please come forward and be on deck. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Erica Ma, and I have two children at Canesville Middle School in the Southwest area. First of all, I am thrilled to be speaking in front of our first ever hybrid school board. I'm so excited that you are all here. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on the budget. Unfortunately, this opportunity is the first thing I have concerns about. The budget was presented at last week's BOE meeting. One week later is the public feedback session on a 300 plus page document. It's been a while since I've had to read quite an assignment in just one week's time. Um, and it's not exactly an easy read. Um, it'd be great if the public would have more time in the future to take a look at this document so we can understand it better. So I apologize ahead of time if I make a comment that is answered somewhere else in the document. In the short time that I had to look through the document, the following are some questions and concerns I have about the proposals. Busing and transportation. While an increase is a good start, I have to ask if we are still considering three, three students to a seat to be acceptable for all grade levels. This is what I've been told any time I've expressed concern to our school principal and the Department of Transportation about the number of students on our middle school buses. If we are still using three as that number, then we have a big problem that needs to be looked at and included in the budget. Three kindergarten students clearly are not the same size as three teenagers. Add in those teenagers' instruments, backpacks, devices, and two is already a tight fit. This doesn't just speak to overcrowding issues, but also to safety. Staffing. Again, any increase in ESOL teachers, counselors, social workers, teaching staff, anyone who has daily contact with students is a great thing. But our ratios are still not even at a recommended level by professional organizations. Speaking to safety again, the National Association of School Nurses starts with the recommendation of one nurse to every 750 students in a healthy school population. With students with special physical and medical needs at schools, it's recommended that that ratio be much lower. Included in that, school nurses are also first line of health care for staff in an emergency. This adds, that, adds numbers to that ratio. And the needs of an elementary school are certainly not the same as those of a high school. Professional organizations recommend much lower ratios also for PPW, social workers, guidance counselors. A letter from Dr. Taylor Mitchell sent earlier today to you goes to the specifics of those professionals, so I won't spend my time on those details. She, as always, presents well thought out and researched information to ask for more staffing of these critical positions. On the other side of these needs is the incredible amount of money we have, have and continue to spend on STAT for a program that has shown little evidence to justify its huge price tag. Two to one ratio for K to two is a great start, but why is the ratio for K actually changing from five per class to two to one? Why can't this ratio of two to one continue in all elementary schools? What children at a young age need is human interaction, more teachers and staff and more interaction with each other. Chromebooks are also great. I have one right here. I would love if they could go to the middle school so my children don't have to keep on redoing their work every time the system crashes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And now we have Ms. Amanda DeLeo. And if I could ask Ms. Brenda Pfeiffer to come and be on deck. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Can you hear me? Um, my name's Amanda. I have two kids in elementary school um, at Hillcrest Elementary School in Catonsville. Um, one's in second grade and one's in kindergarten. So when I was reading the budget, one thing that did jump out at me was the kindergarten ratios for devices. Um, devices are a real issue for me because I 
do not feel like we're implementing them in a very safe way at the elementary school level. So I was pleased in general to see the trajectory of the budget related to device use. Um, I like that the ratios are going down, but at the kindergarten level, as was brought up, I was a little confused about that. Are we really going to one to two? Um, I hope we're not actually increasing ratios. I would love to see, um, instead of one to two, even at the elementary school level, one to three for all the way up through fifth grade. I feel like kids need to be interacting, they need to be creative, they need to be negotiating with each other and with the adult. Um, so those are skills that they can't get on the computer. Um, my second grader just brought home his first dream box assignment. I could talk for the rest of my time about that, but I won't. Um, so. Uh, device rollback I'd like to see. Um, I need to know more about the privacy issues related to the Chromebooks. So um, I'm excited that we would go, be going to less expensive devices. Um, but I, I am still a little concerned about student data and privacy. Um, and finally, I love the idea of more people for our people. I was really excited about that being the theme of the budget. I know you all have worked very hard on this and I appreciate all that you've done. Um, but in that vein, um, I know also that our English language learning population is, is growing and also our special education program uh, populations are both growing more than they have before and I'm concerned that maybe there's not even still enough in the budget. Um, so I'd like to see any potential savings from less focus on technology to go toward having more people for our people, hopefully in the classroom, um, hopefully lowering our ratio, ratios of students to teacher. Um, as a parent, what do I want to see? I want to see smaller class sizes. That's the one thing that always increases success. More adults, more hands-on learning, um, smaller class sizes. My kindergartner, I mean, it's not awful. He's in a classroom of 25, but it's still a lot of small people in one room for one adult. So um, if I could do anything, that's the one thing I would do is make smaller class sizes. Um, that's it. Well, that's the main thing. Um, the other support uh, positions are also really important, and I would love to see more funding for things like counselors, um, personnel, pupil, workers, um, all those kinds of supports also. Thank you for listening. Thank you. And now we have Ms. Brenda Pfeiffer, and if I could ask Ms. Phoebe, Evans Latoka to be on deck. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'd like to begin by saying how pleased I was by some of the things I heard last in last week's budget presentation. Along with many other stakeholders, I've been advocating for some of the changes included in this year's budget proposal, specifically a reduction in stat expenses in favor of increased staffing in areas like special ed, English learners, and support staff, as has been mentioned, counselors, social workers, PPWs, and psychologists. It was gratifying to hear that BCPS has heard these concerns and is choosing to move in this direction. I have testified numerous times about the lack of evidence in support of STAT. This includes both a lack of research supporting the use of digital curriculum while offering one-to-one -one devices and the more recent information highlighting a lack of results in our own system after four years of implementation. So tonight I'm here first to thank you for responding to the many concerns and requests expressed and for choosing to move BCPS in the right direction. But second, I am also here to urge you to do even more. For example, the rapidly growing population of English language learners in our school system was highlighted at the presentation. It's, the population has seen a 113% growth over the past 10 years, and just recently we've added, I heard, over 140 English language learners. Yet the budget requests only 21 new ESOL positions. With teachers already overburdened, 21 new positions will not nearly be enough to meet this demand. Several statistics were also shared regarding our rapidly growing special ed population. The proposed budget asks for 86 special education positions, which, while encouraging, doesn't give even one new special education staff member to each of our 174 schools and centers. How will our special education staff continue to provide education services to such a rapidly growing population when they're already overburdened now? The presentation also highlighted a request for 77 and a half teaching positions for enrollment growth this year. Classes are already overcrowded. In fact, we just heard last week about high school classes that approach 40 students in a class. And enrollment is projected to grow by a few thousand students over the next two to three years, and over 6,700 students over the next 10. An additional 77 and a half teaching positions is a good start, but it isn't nearly enough to catch up with the enormous need for class size reduction. 
We all know the money to meet these needs must come from somewhere. I have consistently suggested reducing the budget for STAT, not because I believe technology doesn't have a place in education. Tech could be done differently and still be a valuable classroom tool, but given the lack of evidence supporting a program like STAT, it seems reasonable to consider less funding for STAT in favor of meeting the increasing demands in other areas. Again, this slight shift in budget priorities is a positive first step, but I fear that what we are doing is nothing more than a Band-Aid approach to a gaping wound that requires much more care and attention to be healed. Now is the time for us to make meeting these basic needs, smaller class sizes, special ed, student support, and ESOL, the real priority in the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Ms. Phoebe Evans-Latoka, and if I could ask Ms. Monique Ortega to please come up and be on deck. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Phoebe Evans Latosha, a parent of students at Towson High. I want to thank you for increasing transparency by posting the BCPS proposed operating budget and capital budget online. It is vital that stakeholders have access to information about how our tax dollars are being spent for this vital public service of educating our children. I especially want to thank the new board for insisting that the details of the capital request be made both available to them as well as posting them for public view, review. Transparency is a start, but I urge you to go further by actively engaging the public in the planning for the future of both capital and operating needs for BCPS. I know we face major budgetary constraints in Baltimore County. We have aging infrastructure in our school buildings and face overcrowding. We need to build more seats so that we can get our children out of trailers. From Stonely Elementary to Dumbarton Middle to Towson High School, my children have experienced class classroom trailers. Towson High has had trailers on site since 2004, 15 years longer than the current seniors have been in the BCPS system. The 2020 budget is inadequate in addressing the current overcrowding crisis at our most overcrowded schools and is not aggressive enough in planning for future overcrowding. Our system is greatly understaffed when it comes to social workers, pupil personnel workers, guidance counselors, psychologists. While this budget provides some slight increase in these positions, it is greatly inadequate in bringing BCPS in line with national standards in recommended ratios. While I am pleased to see a reduction in the one-to-one -one laptop program at the, K, at the elementary levels um, to a two-to-one and a shift to less expensive Chromebooks, it's a start. The budget impact of these savings is a few million dollars and it is a drop in the bucket. I found it very difficult to even find where in this budget document are the total costs of the laptop program to our system. What are the lost opportunities because we are spending so much on student laptops? While I appreciate the argument that providing laptops to every student in the system levels the playing field, what is lost when our system is still recovering from cuts in teaching positions, when our ratios for student support from social workers, counselors, guidance, psychologists are negligently under ratio? With so many schools overcrowded and falling apart, I ha we have to set priorities. I urge the board to ask hard questions as you dig into the details of this budget. This budget is a modest reduction in laptop expenses and modest increases in people for our people. It's a start, but it doesn't go far enough in addressing seat needs and the staffing needs for our students. We can do better. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Ms. Monique Ortega, and if I could ask Mr. Jim Milia to come forward and be on deck. Thank you. Good evening, board. My name is Monique Ortega. I am a parent of two Milford Mill Academy students, both uh, a 10th grader and a freshman. I'm here before you to ask for some of the basic needs at Milford Mill Academy. Um, as you've already heard this evening, our classrooms are overcrowded. Um, as you heard in your last meeting, we have staffing issues. Um, we need our teachers back. I understand from previously attending um, other meetings that Milford Mill is not vetted to be at capacity, but we can't we can't be at capacity if we don't have some of the basic resources to help build our magnet program. So I'm asking for funding for our magnet program. Um, I'm asking for um, some basic resources like our um, the Prometheus board that teachers are asking for, paper, copy paper, some of the simple things. Um, we have the laptops, but everything can't be done on the computer, and when you need to print stuff out, we don't even have basic paper to, to print it out. So with that, the only other thing I have on my list, oh, updated 
desks space. Our children are not small anymore. They're high schoolers. We need updated furniture in our high school. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Mr. Jim Melia, and if I could ask Ms. Sharon Seroff to come up and be on deck. Good evening, Mr. Melia. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm a little underdressed. Um, out at the gym and there are no lights so they're working on that so hopefully we'll have a, a match on Thursday in our unrenovated school so then I went out for a run and I got home and oh budget meeting so I've decided to come out and um, and and um, share my thoughts um, I'd like to talk about three facets of the budget the school budget the office of technology and facilities and the first two are related school and office of technology you've heard some other comments um, to this point already both have been impacted negatively over the past five years as BCPS ramped up for one-to-one -one devices the money had come from somewhere and it came from everywhere at Lansdowne High School, for instance, teachers at the unrenovated unre school used projectors to teach lessons. As all budgets began to shrink, we saw a new phenomenon. If your projector broke, it could take six to 10 weeks to get a replacement. And that, is, that still holds true today and now. We currently have a, a, a teacher waiting um, uh, it's going on four weeks now for a new projector. So imagine if the sound system went out um, and you waited until April 1st to get it fixed. Um, this is a basic teaching need and it's affected by the budget. Um, <clears throat> so with the, the budget slashed, um, we need more money in the school budget, paraeducators, um, projectors, printers, materials, uh, teachers, They've all been reduced, and the encouraging thing is the presentation of the new budget, and uh, it, it points to a positive uh, direction. Um, K through three mastery of skills is necessary so that students, when they get to high school, can do mental math, can write a paragraph. Uh, with a lot of our students, we can see it in the test scores that are going down. We need to fix it early on, it gets harder and harder as they get up to high school. It's, um, it's, it's really a tough game of catch up. Finally, um, facilities, Lansdowne, Towson, and Delaney, and I speak of all three because what's happened is our communities have found each other through this process of petitioning for new schools, and we're, we're becoming more and more supportive of each other because these buildings are needed. And there are other communities in Baltimore County that also need facilities. But we're hopeful that with the new direction and the new process, uh, we see that come to fruition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we have Ms. Sharon Seroff, and if I could ask Mr. Keith Good to please come up and be on deck. Good evening. I also am very, very excited about this budget because it addresses something that I have been advocating for for a while, and that is people. We need more special educators. We need more support staff. What it doesn't address is training for our general education teachers so that they are better prepared to teach the ever-growing special education students in their classrooms. Um, our special ed teachers and our related services staff, such as our OTs and our speech and language therapists, also need updated training because there are a lot of disabilities that are coming into play now that we didn't know about. I just got a client the other day that has a disability that I didn't know existed and I had to do some research. So we need our staff to be better trained so that we're not releasing kids from services when they're functional, because functional is not successful. Um, 
we need our teachers to be better trained to implement um, different types of methods and the IEPs and 504s because that's also a safety issue. Um, and lastly, I'm going to address um, the overcrowding issue because in order to reduce the uh, student-teacher ratio in our buildings, we do need more staff, but we also need more buildings. We have a lot of middle schools in this county that are significantly overcrowded. And currently, I believe they were only building one new middle school, and that's in the Northeast. No one has talked in years about the fact that Franklin Middle and Deer Park Middle are significantly overcrowded and have classes upwards of 35 kids. You can't learn in a class that size. We need more middle schools. We need more um, of schools like White Oak and uh, the Early Childhood Center, Campfield, because those schools also, there's only one. We need more than one. Thank you. Thank you, and our final speaker for this evening is Mr. Keith Good. Welcome. Good evening, I'll be brief. Um, Acting Superintendent, Board Members, thank you for your time and your effort, much appreciated. Um, I just was looking at the, the budget and um, observed some things. It'd be great to show um, enrollment figures as percentages, as that is a primary factor in the huge increase in the budget. It'd be nice to compare your uh, percentage of enrollment increase to actual dollar percentage increase in budget. It doesn't seem very evident from just the cursory view of the, of the budget. Um, second, notice that it appears to be a lot of bloat in the administration. Um, I'd like some consideration to consider how things can be done a little bit more effectively so potentially that administrative money could be better allocated out at the schools. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. And that was our final speaker. Uh, the board will um, consider additional input if folks want to email us at boe at bcps.org. That's boe at bcps.org. The Board of Education will hold a work session on the proposed fiscal year 2020 operating budget on Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019. All written comments received will be compiled for all board members. This public hearing is adjourned.